Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes, so am I, so am I. This is the safest place that we can be. And just the fact that we are all here this morning and you sitting in the seats means that the Lord has an appointment with you this morning. And He wants to convey a message this morning to you. Make sure that you, that you get the message, which means that your, that your garden, that your heart needs to be prepared to receive seed. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we have an opportunity to come together and worship you. Father, thank you that you love us. Holy Spirit, I just pray that you touch each and every person this morning. Thank you that you've given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Thank you that you saved us. And thank you that you call us family. I pray that you bless the session in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning we're going to do things a bit different. I am going to call a, I, um, I'm going to call a couple of people to the front just to come and share their, their story. So the good news is, is that you don't have to be perfect to talk about Jesus and what he did for you. You don't have to have all of the education that you need to come and stand in front here and 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 tell the congregation that the Lord saved me. And it's by His grace that I'm alive this morning. Um, so who is going to be first? Let's, yeah, so let's start with Sister Sheree. You, you can come to the front. <laughs> Thanks, sis. And for those of you who have seen Sheree since the beginning, you know what a beautiful transformation this is. This is. From uh, where she comes from and up until now. She's very nervous. Can we just give her just a warm welcome? Uh -huh. Is it on? Okay. Thank you. Tell us your story, my see. Okay. Um, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. I panic so big. Sorry. Um, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm going to pro to her. Al die hartseer en goed wat ek in my leven deur is nie. Maar die Heere is nog altyd daar vir my van, ek weet nie, van het ek kan onthou. Hy was my genadig. Um, uh, Terren, jy het vroeger in die week met ons gepraat waar dier jy is en goed. En ek was soos stom geslaan, want ek het gedink, soos jy weet, het is dier al die hebe goed. En dit is die naaste my waar dier jy was nie. Um, Okay, ek was soos my stiefpa het baie gemelest. Okay, uh, my ma was my alles, maar ek okay, het een drank issue gehad. Ze het my geslaan as hy dronk is. So elke dag as ek van die school afkom, is het weer daai goed. Um, my ma is dood toe ek 17 is. Um, so ek en my boetie het, maar dat is my beste maaikie, hy is nog hier nie, maar ek hoop ek kom gehou. Um, Ek het een man ontmoet um, toe ek 18 is. Hy het my geloos toe ek 28 is. Um, alles wat ek weet van draak self het ek by hom gesien. Um, ek plameer om nie. Ek was baie lief hom. Um, maar hy was op te doen met, uh, met goeders met satanisme. En ek het nie die ergens van die saak soos jy weet gesien daar nie. En, um, chemical drugs. Mense lag altyd as hulle praat oor die goed wat hulle sien en, en weet, baie evil goeders, maar dit is real, ou, want dit soos maak jou um, sensitief soos wat achter die weil is. En net soos waar al evil goed is, is die heren ook daar. Amen. Um, ek het, um, ek het so na school toe gegaan en al die, maar ek het nie rarig in die heren gegloe of in God gegloe nie. Maar dit was die enigste plek waar ek hoop en Um, ek weet, enige comfort, as ek het so kan noem, gekry het, dan bid ek en ek vraag asjeblief wat, um, ja, ek hy so, ek het allemaal net kort hou, um, een week voordat ek hier nou toe gekom het, ek nog weet van die plek nie, ek het in een veld gesit, um, ek kom van die straat af, drie, drie jaar, 
wat ik een man gevolg het en heb my geloos acht maanden later. Vraag gehuil en ek het net gevraag, sublief, jyre, wees my net, want hoe moet ek gaan, wat moet ek doen, want ek kan nie huis toe gaan nie, het niemand anders nie. Um, ja, ek gaan nie, as ek langer daar geblei, dan sal ek my weer in prostitutie ingegaan het, of ek weet nie, maar dankie jyre, dit het nie met my gebeur. So, um, ja, um, my broer het ook vir my gesê, want hy was al ons in 7 jaar, het elke keer dat jy terug gaan straat toe, is het erger is het moeiliker, en ja. so, ek wil nie wees om te gaan nie, so baie dankie dat julle my hier aanvaar het, my help, en goed, ek weet, ek was so'n bykie ongeskik en lelik in die begin, maar ek probeer, en ja, rarig baie, baie dankie, want soos, ja, ek ek denk ek dat dit nie kan hou. <laughs> ek het in die veld gesit, net toe bid, ek, ek moet hierdie vele sê, ek het toe bid, ek, en ek praat met die heren, en ek soos, dit kom net uit, en niemand het my gehoor of gesien nie, maar ok, dit was soos minder as een beek, toe kry iemand my, hulle sê vir my, ok, kom, gaan dit vir jou reel, en ja, toe kom ek hier aan, en alles gaan net, soos, mooi strijd van daar af, so, dankie, lees ge, lees ge jou stukkie wat jy daar het, nee, ek wil nie dit haak op, dit is die bak, en jy dit haak op, nee, lees dit, lees dit, lees dit, oké, 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 maar, maar ons kyk dit huis, so die, so die stukkie wat sy, wat sy gehighlight het, die so, is een stukje uit um, 1 Petrus 4 en dit is een ach, um, 1 Petrus 5 en dit is een stukje wat ons allemaal ken it's a piece that we all know it says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so in due season that he will lift you up ja, dankie Sherry you know what is significant to me is that that is somebody's child that's somebody's daughter and if you are a parent, you would know that that's the last place that you want your children to end up is on the street. And we are so grateful for you to be here. Uh, th- thank you for sharing your story. It is never easy standing here and talking in front of people because everybody's looking at you. So <laughs> and um, yeah, so thank you, Sherry. Uh, Melissa, will you like? This is also a lady that has walked the road. But I'm sure that she will tell her story. Morgen jylle. Ek is ook net so nervous, maar ok, hier sê ek nou. Um, ek wil hee as jylle na my kyk vandag, vir die van jylle wat nog nie aanvaar het waar jylle is hier nie. Um, en daar is hoop vir allemaal van ons um, en dat as jy nog nie besluit het dat jy hierdie pad saam met die heren gaan loop nie moet jy weet, hy gaan jou persoe en hy gaan jou anhou persoe en hy gaan jou anhou persoe en hy gaan anhou en anhou en anhou totdat jy luister um, dis my 17e reap en 26 jaar sy heroïn verslaving en ek gaan nie in die nitty gritties ingaan nie, maar ons het met ons sessie woensdag met Taila, het um, sy gesê dat God jou naam op sy hand tatoeëer of skryf, en toe ons Badfield was, toe kry ek een kaartje wat sê, God ken my naam, nou ek self gaan nog dier baie uh, seasons wat het vir my voel, um, maar waar is God, waar was God, en hier die laaste drie maanden, wat ek hier was, het God vir my een groter werkelijkheid geraak as wat die ruïne ooit kon vir my wees. En ja, ek wil net vir julle stikkie lees um, die liekie wat ons laaste gesing het, wat sê I wasn't meant to be tending a grave um, I was born and raised back to life again die wat julle wat my gesien het ook hier ingekom het ek was amper dood voor ek ingekom het en ja, God het net my nog my hele leven lang toegevou in een kokon en um, ja, ek is so dankbaar vir hom en vir wat hy vir my gedoen het um, ek wil het eindelijk uit die Passion Translation uit lees, maar gaan het gauw vir julle lees uit um, hierdie boek Bijbel van ons uit is Romans 8 verse 27 het sê and you such as that knows what 
the mind of the he who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God and we know that those and for those who love God all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose for those whom he foreknew he also predestined and he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and those he predestined he also called and those who he called he justified and those who he justified he glorified yes so uh, as God, if God knew before my birth every step I'm going to take in my life, how many times he's going to have to come and fetch me, how many times I'm not going to listen to his voice, he knew. But he also knew in order for my heart to really look for him, I'm going to have to do it so many times. Um, in the Passion Translation, it says, God is the searcher of the heart. He knows fully our longings, yet he also understands the desire of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit passionately, passionately pleads before God for us, which I think the Holy Spirit did many times for me is plead, God, please help Melissa, please touch her, please go and fetch her, please help her, please keep her alive. Um, so we are all convinced that every detail of our life is continually woven together for good, for we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose. For he knew all about us before we were born, and he destined us from the beginning to share the likeliness of his son. This means that the son is the oldest among a vast family of brothers and sisters who will become just like him. Having determined our destiny ahead of time, he called us to himself and transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone he called. And those who possess the perfect righteousness, he co-glorified with his son. So I pray that for you, that you might be having that perfect righteousness from God. It's all I want to say. Thanks. Amen. You see, a very small percentage of people walk away from 20 years of heroin addiction. So I can tell you now, from her eyewitness account, that it's by grace that we are all sitting here this morning. And this is, yeah, this is my theme or title for, for today. I want to talk about our journey. And, but I don't want to talk about our past. I want to talk about the day that we met the Lord. You see, when He rescued His... He's, um, he's a beloved people, the nation of Israel from Egypt. The journey started for them. So although they had a testimony of slavery, of what they went through for 400 years, when he intervened and he sent Moses to rescue his people, the journey began. And it wasn't an easy journey for 40 years in the desert. Um, who is going to be next? Trikas. Yeah, come and share your story, brother. Morning church. Lacquer. Let's just first give a hand to the Lord. Please. <clears throat> it's by His grace and power that I'm here today that I can share and glorify Him, His story, how He got me through some difficult, difficult seasons. So, Yanni said something now about the journey. So, I was going to talk about a lot of things, but I think the Holy Spirit wants me to talk about when I met Him and what He's done for me. Amen. So, Going through primary school and high school, um, I come out of an abusive household. My, ma my father abused my mother. Um, they drank a lot, so every time they get drunk, they had arguments, and my father would throw the windows out with his beer glass. Um, before I was born, my brothers went through worse, um, where my father physically abused my mother, but I never saw that, thank the Lord. Um, so coming you know, when you were young, you don't know how to deal with this pain. Um, as a teenager, also, I did not know the healthy way to deal with this. I was angry at the Lord for these things happening. I was swearing Him. I was with a group of friends that we blasphemed. We used the Holy Trinity like it was popcorn in a movie. Um, you know, I rebuked the group of people at school that 
were serving the Lord. I was literally 180 from the Lord. I did not trust Him. I did not love Him because I went through this pain. So, and also, during teenage years, I um, started drinking, and then, you know, one thing leads to another, Then I started using drugs, and was in denial, thinking this is not an addiction, because I, I didn't seek help. I was prideful. I thought I knew everything, you know, like a teenager does. So going through that in my early 20s up to 24, I think, I can't remember, um, when I was in my first rehab, oh, that's what I wanted to tell, sorry, just before that, that's how I met the Lord. So I was working in Artis in a restaurant, and I was still doing my thing, you know, covering it up, um, trying to live a double life, you know, in front of people you are shop, but behind people you do your thing behind closed doors, and a guy started working there that was in Doxadeo Church, and he randomly came up to me while we were busy um, working and spinning. He come to me and he says, um, the Lord wants you at the church. And first I laughed. I thought, this guy is mad. Um, and I went home, and it's, it stuck with me. It bothered me. Um, and obviously the Lord showed me afterwards, it's him. It was knocking. It was knocking. Then I closed the windows of the house. Then he pops his head in this window and says, Hey, Drikas, are you ready? So I kept rejecting him until one morning, and I'll never forget this. I was also using the previous night, didn't sleep. Um, and I, I looked in the mirror when I was getting ready for work. And I, I just hear the Lord clearly telling me this this is not who you are. Give your heart to me, and I'll show you who you are. And it was, it was so powerful that it shook my, my whole core, my being, it shook me. And I was still walking to work, and it felt like the Holy Spirit fighting this thing inside of me. I, it, it felt, I got nauseous, I got, it's a weird feeling to describe, but it was the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, there was a snap. It was like a pop. And I felt overwhelming love and peace over me and I phoned the people for the right help I took the courage went to my parents told them listen or my father well he was still there um, listen I need help and also through people I met at the church that I went eventually everything fell in place I just had to surrender and submit to God just like that verse says now in 1 Peter 5 6 and it's not been an easy road since I've met the Lord, but it's been worth it. It's been, it's been humbling. It's been revealing. It's, it's difficult to explain to you guys, but ever since I've met him that day, he's never left my side. Even though he was with me through my years, times that I could have been dead, being very irresponsible, yeah. he was with me. And he just started revealing everything to me, everything and I, it's like, it's like an infection, but in a good way. Um, I don't ever want to let go of the Lord because he's been there for me. And just another quick story. When I was in my first rehab, I was there and into my sixth month, my father decided to commit suicide. Um, I did work through it. Thank the Lord. I was sober. And I had the right people around me to, to comfort me. But um, it was tough. But if I didn't meet the Lord before, I'd, I'd, I don't know where I would have been. I would have been on the street probably. Would have maybe done the same thing. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, is guys, don't let go of the, God, uh, of the Lord. Don't let go of Jesus. Truly, truly. Even if you feel that day that he's not there, he is there. Because it's been a tough road, but I've held on to his garment, and it's worth it. So yeah, that's the, the short version. If you want to hear more, you're welcome to come and speak to me. I have some cool testimonies of what the Lord did. Very, very cool. Um, but yeah, I want to thank the Lord and honor him today for what he's done. Amen. And I bless him. You see, when somebody shares their life with you, we need to honor them for that because there's something that we can pick up in there so what everybody's saying is that the Lord is good 
You must remember, if he picked you up from a specific place, whether you were on the pavement, lying in your own vomit, with a needle in your arm, doesn't matter where he picked you up. And he placed you in a place like this, like, like, like any other ministry than ours, then he has a plan for you. So what I'm getting at is that you don't, that you mustn't miss the point of why you are here. You must identify your season properly. In what season am I in? What am I supposed to learn in this season? Don't miss it. It is important for you to know. Because this is a starting point of many of our journeys going forward. This is a season where you get equipped. Where you get the tools that you need. Not to go out and just do a normal job. To go out and change the world. We don't want to be normal. Nobody in here wants to be normal. That's why we are here. Let's say, Brian. Jy is so ver van normaal af soos wat mens kan kry. <laughs> Hou die Heer het een plan met jou leven, man. Next time. This guy has a testimony that will really, really shake the foundations of your belief system. So, so I'm saving that for, for next time. Thanks. Let's be honest, I'm glad I'm wearing long pants so you can't see my legs shake. Um, but my story is not much different to a lot of people here. I was also raised as a Christian. I gave my life to the Lord when I was baptized when I was 12. But I didn't um, really appreciate the privilege to have an honest and an open relationship with God. I tend to, as to, so to speak, put them in a little box, put it on a shelf, marked, use when needed only. That's so how I led my life. And I used to, with arrogance and pride, selfishness, man-made wisdom, I rely on myself. And I took me to places where I never wanted to be, really. And I look around and I hear some of the people's stories here. Uh, I'm not as prolific as they are. I never knew the rabbit hole went so down deep. But yet, everybody's stories, we all come to the same place. And I call it rock bottom. And so the ring story is different, but the ring to it is all the same. When you're there, you feel like, yo, oh, despair, you're not sure what to do, what to say. You've tried everything you know by man, and then you reach to God. And then God says, you came through deep waters, let me help you. But still, I refused to help and rely on myself again. I never knew rock bottom would have a basement, but it did. The second time I tried to commit suicide, I was there. And with family intervention uh, and friends, and my employer, I realized, you know, it's something I need to work on. I tried everything by myself, my own pride, but then I realized I need God's help. And then I searched back to God. Instead of putting God on the shelf, I tried to involve him all my life. And before, when I used to see God's rules as very restrictive, put me in a little box not to live, now I realize it's more like guidance for us to keep us safe. So. I used to drink a lot, and when I drink, I get depressed. And because I'm depressed, I drink again. And I never found the solution. And I always thought it's because of that that I do the things I do. So I never really thought this helped for me. But as I came back to the Lord and seek His guidance, not my own, and by His grace that I'm here today, not my own, I felt like I overcome some obstacles in my life. And I've got a lot more to do. And sometimes I still feel that way, insignificant, Poorly down. But when I read the scripture I'm going to read to you now, I see there's hope for us. And the scripture I chose is in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 8. It reads for us We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Amen. So I think today the message for me was. I used to use the God's word, the Bible, as a piece of cake on an occasion when I want to use it for my own benefit. But I realize now that God's word is like daily bread. We partake of it every day 
to help us not to go by our way, but by God's way. Sure. Yeah. And so each one of us has something significant to say about the Lord's goodness, which is, which is always refreshing to hear. The Bible says we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So it's good. And it's good even, and it's even better to build testimony. Hey, say Brunt, we don't fall for everything. From now on, we stand up for the right stuff instead of falling down for the wrong stuff. Uh, I know that Don also wants to share something, so Don, you can also come to the front. Morning, everybody. Okay. Um, Melissa mentioned something, and even Cherie mentioned that we were called. There was something calling out to us. So who here believes that God has called us? Everybody? Yeah? Okay. So I've got a question that has been in my thoughts and in my heart for a while. When we are called, in what state are we usually? Pretty much broken, lost, don't know where we're going. So, the Israelites were calling out to God for salvation because they felt lost and oppressed and in a place where they were vulnerable and they couldn't be um, well, useful to themselves. They, they felt that they were being mistreated and misused. And so were all of us. So the question that was in my mind the whole time is, why do when we call out to God, do we think that he will leave us the way we were? God is, God is not just calling us. He also equips us. So and this is the point where I want to get to. Um, in John 14 verse 12, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Okay, so when we called him, we were lost and broken and not able to do anything for ourselves. Okay, and then Jesus calls us. He calls us back. He calls us back to him, back to his kingdom. And then he says, we will do the things that he did. So what did Jesus do then? Jesus went around and he was preaching freedom and the gospel, saying that in God we don't have to be condemned and weak and all that kind of stuff. So he said, I'm here now. And then he was showing us how to do all these kind of things, miracles and signs and wonders and um, even Nicodemus said to him we know that you came from God because it's only God that does these things because they've seen it in their history when Israel was calling out to God when their journey has started God showed them magnificent and wonderful things but that didn't take them out of the desert <laughs> so it's not going to be easy to do the things that Jesus did it's never easy. It's not supposed to be. Because standing up for the right thing is never easy. It costs you something. And then in Mark 16, verse 17, it says, And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink deadly poison, it will not even hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. Did Jesus do those things? Casted out demons, healed the sick, laid his hands on them, prayed for them, and then everything changed. 
But that was God showing favor towards us. The thing is, we, are, we, we came in lost and broken and on our rims, nearly dead, most of us. And then we start to believe in who Jesus is because he called us. And he kept on calling us until we heard him. I mean, a lot of times we say, okay, go call that person. And then we wait and we get impatient because he's not showing up yet. And then we send another one and another one and another one until the person that we've called actually shows up. God did the same thing. Kept on doing the same thing. Kept on sending people. It reminds me of this story of this guy standing on his roof and there's a massive flood. His whole house is underwater already and he keeps on shouting out towards God and saying, save me, save me. And then there's a guy that shows up in a life raft and says, no, dude, jump in. I'll, I'll take you the rest of the way. And then he refused. He said, no, 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 that thing doesn't look safe. It's a dinghy. This flood's big. And then eventually, there's a guy with a bigger motorboat showing up next to the house. He says, no, jump in. He kept on going. And then he kept on asking God, no, but where's the help? That you, I'm waiting for you to help me. And eventually there was a chopper. Came down and shouted to the guy, hey, grab the rope. Lifelines were flying left and right and center. And eventually the guy drowned. Flood overcame him. And then he got to God and he was angry at God. And he said, hey, God, but where were you? He said, no, I s first I sent the guy with the dinghy. Called you. Called you to get into the boat. You didn't want to listen. Then I sent the guy with the motorboat. You told him, nah, the dock is failure. And I sent the guy with a chopper. <laughs> Still didn't want to grab the rope. The point that I'm making is God never stops calling. He never stops calling. And the thing is, that there's a lot of people out there that needs help. So in Luke 10 verse 2 it says, the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. Yes. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. We need to become the guys that's getting sent. God didn't just call us. He also equips us and he teaches us because he shows us how to do things. And then he sends us out. And then he said in verse 3, Go your way, behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of of wolves you think it's easy for a lamb to walk into a wolf then no not even close but that's our journey we need to expect that we will have resistance we will have to expect that there's going to be people that's going to speak up against us we're going to have to expect that the journey that we're going to be on is not going to be easy we need to expect that we're going to be in difficult spaces sometimes. <laughs> and then we need to overcome that as well. Amen. So let's talk about this journey because I don't want this to be a boring message to you. Okay? So if you hear that you're going on a journey, okay, so you know that God saved you. Is there anybody that doesn't know that, that the Lord saved you? I oh, know. Oh, sorry. Please come and see me afterwards. We'll talk about salvation again. <laughs> Everybody in here was saved. There is no person in here that hasn't given their heart to the Lord, right? Everybody. Okay. So now we're going on a journey. But we need to know what we need to take on this journey. It's, it's important. Because if you prepare for a camping trip or an outing or a picnic, there's some stuff that you need to take. Do you know what the Lord says that you must take? Where's uh, Tandy? Do you know what the Lord says that you must take on your journey? Can I show you? Please open your Bibles to Luke, to the book of Luke, Luke 9. Luke 9. So Luke 9 starts off where the Lord equips His people, the 12 that He wanted to send out, to go and preach the good news, to go and heal the sick, to make blind people see. And then Jesus said, what they need to take. 
Can you imagine? The Lord equips you and He gives you a mandate to do something for Him in His kingdom. And right before you leave, He says, Take nothing. Take nothing. I'm sure that the twelve might have had some questions. Lord, it's fair. But I can't do it. What if it gets cold? What do we eat? We need to buy food. I'm sure that they had all these questions. Now here's the good news. When He saves you, when He redeems you, when He delivers you, you know that you are called, and then He sends you. Not anything, nothing that was made can prepare you for the journey that's about to lie ahead. Why do you think he said to the twelve, take nothing for your journey? No staff, nothing that can protect you. You don't need anything. I am, I am the one that protects you. No bag. You don't need baggage for where I am sending you. No bread. I am, I am your provider. I am the one that will sustain you. No money. And do not take two tunics. Take nothing for your journey. Say, Brand, for the gedeelte wat voorlee in jou leven, het jy niks nodig nie. Nee, die heren. Nee, die heren. There was something that Jesus wanted to teach the twelve for their journey, after equipping them and giving them authority to heal the sick, to make blind people see, to cast out demons. So he first gave them purpose, authority, then he equipped them, then he sent them out, and then he said something that shook them, I'm sure. Take nothing for your journey. And, and the answer to that one we find in Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, which says, Say amen when you when you were there. Brother, you cannot come to church without a Bible. You can't. Just now Jesus comes and, and can everybody with a Bible please come with me? And then bring your Bible to church, please. Everybody. Proverbs 3. It's a very well known piece. And this is what Jesus was trying to get across. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, not with some of your heart. It means that there's no doubt. When He sends you, you mustn't doubt, you must go. Go out and make disciples of all nations, starting in your immediate community and family, and then expanding from there. By the way that we live, by the way that we talk, by the way that we act, sometimes we miss it. Most of the times I miss it. If you give me a little bit of freedom, the first thing I do is I go stuff it up. And then I want to go fix it. Luckily, we don't have to be perfect. But we have a king that is perfect. Somebody that saved us that is perfect. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Because the journey ahead is not easy. And most of the times it looks impossible. You will be out of your comfort zone. If he sent Moses, a guy with a speech impediment, to go speak in front of Pharaoh, what do you think that he will do with your weaknesses? He will use your weaknesses for his benefit. You who don't like to stand in front of people and talk, he will use you to go talk in front of people, Sherry. He will send you to the woman that needs to hear your story, that there's hope, Melissa. Nobody comes out of 20 years of heroin addiction alive. You're the first person that I see. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Not to you. Because we were disobedient for 20 years. <laughs> but yet you found favor with the Lord. So many times we try to justify the unfairness of this world. But thank God that, if, that favor is not fair. Thank God that favor is not fair. 
We don't look at the iniquities in the world. We look towards Jesus. For everything that is wrong with the world is right with Him. That is wrong with us is right with Him. And I want to empower you guys this morning. Dennis, you can change the world. And I want you to know this. You can change the world. Your story can change the world. There's people that need to hear your story, your testimony. That's why we build testimony. Day in, day out. Showing up. Here I am, Lord, send me. Even though you stuffed it up yesterday, you pitch up and you say, Here, Father, from the day so, gebruik me. You need to show up in order to be used in the kingdom. You need to show up. You need to be willing. And you need to be obedient. When he says to you, go, you need to go. I never pictured my life the way that it turned out. But he had other plans. Other plans. I, I also wish that I would, would have died long ago when I was as old as you. But he had other plans. He intervened. And still, I don't know the destination of where this all will end. All I need to know is, is that I need to trust the Lord with all of my heart. I do not lean on my own understanding because if I leaned on my own understanding, I would realize that it's impossible. Things look impossible. To start over at 40 is impossible. Never learn. No, it's not. <laughs> we serve a God of the impossible. He raised people from the dead. He raised people from the dead. There's, there was a dead lady sitting there. There's a dead guy standing there. And they are alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. In all of our ways, we need to acknowledge Him in every single step from here on forward. So He saved you from wherever you come from. You don't have to come from a life of addiction for the Lord to save you. We were all lost. But every step from here on, I'm going to invite Him in all of my decisions. In everything that I do, I want to invite Him to come and show me the way. Why? Because I don't know where I'm going and I don't know what I'm doing. All I, need, all I need to know is that I need to take nothing and I need to trust Him. Because we cannot see into the unseen. Is there anybody that can see the, the supernatural right now? Except Stephanie. We will talk about this after. Is there anybody that can see into the unseen? No. Okay. Which means that you are blind. Because the bigger part of our universe consists out of the unseen. Only 10% of the things that we, well, well only 10% of the things that exist we can see. The majority we cannot see. I cannot see the space between me and Brother Werner. But it doesn't mean that it, that it doesn't exist. So we need to rely on the Holy Spirit to guide us. That more is heavy, huh? Yes, oh, here is heavy. So, ons vat niks nie, en ons vertrou. En daar gaan ons. We were saved now. So, he saved Israel from Egypt, from slavery. 400 years of slavery. And now they get into the desert. Now they go through even more difficult stuff that they went through in the past 400 years. When he saves you, prepare yourself for the journey. If he saved you, prepare yourself for a journey. Because you're going on a journey. And it's not going to be easy, like Don said. It's not going to be easy. If he saved you from prostitution and human trafficking, guess who you, who you are going back to. Once, you've, once he's given you authority, healed you, and equipped you, he's going to send you back there and say, bring my people out of there. Bring my people out of He doesn't care if you have a speech impediment or an infirmity or a weakness. He's going to send you back there to go fetch his people. You need to prepare yourself. And you're not taking anything. 
You are going to go with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope this message is not too heavy. But I want to leave you with this this morning. That if He's called you, you need to prepare yourself for the journey. Naniku, please don't believe that He's going to take you from the street and place you on a pedestal and keep you safe all of your life. He's going to send you back there. You go and fetch his people. I've, I've seen this and I'm walking the same road. I haven't arrived. Um, can we go to Philippians? Rikas? Philippians. So we talked about what we're taking with. Now I want to tell you guys what your focus needs to be on. Paul writes in the, to the church of Philippi, uh, Philippians 3 verse 13, and he says, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it by my own. And this is also my confession this morning. Nobody can say that they've arrived, that we know Jesus fully, that we can turn water into wine. Did he know that it's a bigger, well, in my opinion, and that's why Jesus said, greater things that you will do. It, it is a bigger miracle to, to uplift somebody than to turn water into wine. I'm sure. Bear that in mind. So Paul says, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it by my own. But one thing I do. Say, Brant, one thing I do. Is what? One thing I do. Forgetting. Forgetting what lies behind me. If he's picked you up and he has placed you in a place where he wants to work with you, we don't make it our residence to go stay where we come from. I am not a drug addict anymore. I'm not a prostitute anymore. Forgetting what lies behind. That's not my focus anymore. Because it's not who I am anymore. But, I look forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal. What is the goal? Can anybody tell me what's the goal that Paul is talking about there? I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. It's to seek Him, to find Him, to know Him, to form a relationship with Him. That's eternal life. It's to know Him and to be known by Him. But, <laughs> Marle. We are so blessed and fortunate to be alive. We are so blessed and fortunate to have something that we can look forward to. You can go to the next scripture. Rikus. But there's a cost to all of us. There's a cost to the journey ahead. And it's not going to be cheap. Although salvation is given freely to all who believe, it doesn't mean that it didn't come at a price. And so your journey will also come at a price. And it's going to cost you everything. You are going to have to lay down your passions, your desires, your dreams. This is a cost of being a disciple, of following Him. Matthew 16, 24 says the following. Is everybody there that has a Bible? Mordo, where did that Bible come from? Good. 
Make sure that you bring your Bibles to church. It's important for you to read. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anybody, if Seibrand wants to follow me and come after me, if Peter wants to follow me, if Wayne wants to follow me, if Mike Tyson wants to follow me, if Barry wants to follow me, let him deny himself. What does that mean? Huh? Not my will, but your will. Sounds easy, but it's not. 99% of the day, I miss this. When I go on holiday, I miss this. <laughs> when I come back from holiday, I miss this. But I don't want to miss it anymore. I want to take the Lord with me everywhere I go. Because if I don't take Him, there's chaos. And everything falls apart. We know how that is. If we don't take Him with, there's chaos. We break relationships. We lie. I've been on a journey for the past two months, or for the past month. I'm in a season of pruning. All of us are probably in a season of pruning, and we're going to go through pruning for the rest of our life. But I'm finding it hard in this season just to stay upright. There's so much things happening. There's so, the load is heavy. Last night I messaged pastor and I said, listen, yes, it is a sword load. But then the second part of my message read, I'm thankful for this season in my life. Ek is dankbaar vir hierdie seisoen. Alhoewel het moeilik voel, is dit nie onmoendlik nie. And if it feels like life is crushing you at this stage, be of good cheer, press through, carry on. Want net die achter le jou deurbraak. Just behind all of this is your breakthrough. Stay on course. Stay on course. Hier is nie a highway nie. Dit is a, dit is a baie narrow paikie. En as hier jou eers beet het, if he, if he has gotten hold of you, and you have the Holy Spirit in you, when you give a step off the path, immediately you will, you will be reminded. Not condemned, convicted. Nee. We must be sensitive to that part of our, of our being. We are spirit first that lives in a body that has a soul. Be sensitive to the things of the spirit. Sensitive. Hey, Stephanie. Sensitive. Mm. Let him deny himself. Let, a, let him take up his own cross. His cross. And then, follow me. Deny yourself, pick up your own cross. What does it mean to pick up your own cross? Say again. Take responsibility for what you have to take responsibility for. Very good answer, Brother Nico. Yes. Yes. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake. Will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? The best thing that you can do for your life at this stage. Is to surrender. Yeah. To pour yourself out. And this is the training grounds. So you can start training in here. Pour yourself out for your brother sitting to your left or to, or, uh, to your right. Let him be more significant. Let his interest be more significant than yours. Kingsley? Are you ready for this? This is the journey. 
So don't believe that He's taken you from wherever He's taken you and placed you here, and now you're going to be comfortable. You will never be comfortable. If Jesus wasn't comfortable while He was on earth and He's the King of the universe, neither will we. Paul said, arm yourself with the same mind. And this is my message. I hope that this wasn't too heavy. This was actually meant to be in, in, encouraging. But arm yourself with the same mind that Jesus had. Although he was God, he didn't count equality with God as something to behold. But he emptied himself. For you and for me. And I want to do the same in his kingdom for his people. This is most probably one of the difficult seasons that you will go through in your life. But I can promise you so much, if you put in the work and the effort to work on the things that you need to work on, and if you allow God to be God in your life, allow Him to be who He is in your life, you look back from 10 years and said, this was impossible, but the Lord had a plan. And I pray for each one of you that you will find whatever He has in store for you. Because the world so easily distracts us from what we are supposed to do. But it remains your decision if you want to follow after the world or if you are laying down your life for something bigger than you and bigger than me. There's much work to do. Don read a very significant piece. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers, the people doing the work in the kingdom is few. There's so much work to be done in this broken world before he comes again. And who's going to do it? Barry? Are you going to wait for somebody else? Are you, are you going to look to somebody else to come and do this work? Or are you going to step into that shoes and do it? It's not easy. I was telling people yesterday that being in ministry is most probably one of the hardest things to do. And each one of us was called for ministry. What ministry? Can somebody tell me? The same ministry as what Jesus said. The ministry of reconciliation. Of telling people the good news that there's hope. There's hope. Don't miss the season, Ben. Moet het nie mis nie, my broer. Otherwise, you're going to have to walk around the same mountain again. Learn what you need to learn and do what you need to do. Are you guys ready with the video? I'm so looking forward to this. Last week, we started with part one of a day in, in the life of an Arcadian. And this is part two.
you mustn't be confused. This is one of the best facilities, and there's nobody else doing what we are doing at the moment. I'm telling you, we have visited a facility yesterday, and I'm telling you that there's nobody that's doing what we are doing with the people that we are doing it with. This is good news. Father, we thank you that we, never, that we have an opportunity where we can gather together and talk about you and make your name big, because your name is big. Your name is holy. Thank you that you saved us. And thank you that you've called us and equipped us to go talk about you and tell people about you and show people who you are. I just pray that you go with us through this week and highlight the things that we need to say, the things that we need to do to the people that you want us to speak to and to show it. Thank you that you have a plan and a purpose for our lives and that you've called us to do great things. Thank you that we can be called your children. In Jesus' name, amen.